Good morning, everyone, and welcome to St. Michael's on the Heights Episcopal Church in Worcester, Massachusetts, and also online and in your home. This is the way of church in these current times. During Lent, the lengthening of days, the lengthening of days, we are journeying together, following into the hope that is set before us in Jesus Christ. We do that this morning by gathering for worship, and we look ahead to brighter days as the vaccine spreads, as uh, rates of infection decline. We're not out of the woods yet, but yet there is much, much cause for hope. Uh, so looking ahead uh, at upcoming events this evening and every Sunday evening at 6.30 online via Zoom, Center in Prayer, all are welcome. Uh, and especially as we're coming into Holy Week, you are looking to learn uh, a new way of engaging with God on the deepest possible level. Centering prayer can be that. Uh, noonday prayer. Uh, every Monday through Thursday at noon, from noon till 1215, uh, we gather a very brief service that has a very set prayers, a psalm, and a scripture reading and reflection. Uh, all are welcome, again, via Zoom. Grief group uh, on Monday evenings. Uh, that's at 6.30, 6.30 to 7.30, almost every Monday, except for when we have vestry. We will have grief group this coming Monday, again, via Zoom. All are welcome. All forms of grief are supported, whether it's recent or long past, a loved one or the loss of a job or um, turmoil in your life circumstance. All forms of grief are supported. We have open prayer hours, uh, an opportunity for uh, folks to come in to our sacred space, into our church, and pray. Those are on Wednesday from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m., and then again in the evening for those who can't make it during the day, 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. And also on Wednesday in the evening at 6.30, we have our uh, ongoing Lenten series with the Society of St. John the Evangelist. Deacon Diane has been guiding us uh, in this, and uh, uh, we've had just some amazing discussions about prayer. The theme is learning to pray in new ways uh, in these circumstances in which we find ourselves in these days. And looking further ahead, as I said, Holy Week is upon us. I wanted to share what that's going to look like for us this year. Palm and Passion Sunday will be uh, March the 28th. We will gather online as we are doing here today. So it will be worship online via Facebook Live at 10 a.m. Uh, on that Sunday. And then immediately following that, I will be present at the church with palms. And you are welcome to drive to the church uh, I'll be in the front of the church on Burncoat Street. You can just sort of pull onto Burncoat, and I'll be happy to uh, hand you your palms uh, right into your car, give you a blessing, say a prayer with you and your family in person. Again, this is Palm Sunday, March 28th, immediately following the 10 a.m. service online. So it'll probably be at about 11.15, uh, let's say. And I'll stay there until uh, a little bit after noon. So again, palms for you and for your family, uh, and just come on up. Um, if you cannot make it, uh, if you're at all concerned or your mobility is an issue, uh, we are able to deliver a limited number of palms to those who are homebound or unable to come up. If you would like a palm delivered to you or uh, to a loved one, please uh, just call the office this week, uh, next week or two, and let us know. Later in that week of Holy Week, uh, Maundy Thursday falls on April the 1st. We will have, uh, again, worship like this online via Facebook Live, available at 7 p.m. for our Maundy Thursday service. Following that, we will have, as we did last year, our virtual um, vigil in the garden, where before the uh, Blessed Sacrament, which will be displayed on an ongoing Zoom call, we can come in and pray. And the goal is to have people pray successively uh, through the hours of the night to remind us of our constancy to Jesus, even when the disciples fell asleep. That will be again Maundy Thursday, which is on April 1st. Good Friday, 
April 2nd. Worship via Zoom. Uh, this is, of course, the spare and stripped down worship of uh, Good Friday, a somber reflection on Christ's death for us. That's noon. Uh, there'll be noon on Facebook Live. And then again, available immediately following. So if you can't be there for noon, you can then um, uh, follow up later in the day whenever you are able to, to watch. On Holy Saturday, March or uh, April the 3rd, there will be a diocesan-wide Easter vigil at a time uh, to be determined. I'll let you know about that once we know. And uh, Easter Sunday. Now, this is uh, important. Uh, it's Easter, after all. Uh, April 4th. We will have 10 a.m. worship. And that worship will be live. If the weather is suitable, and by suitable I mean it's not actively raining, we will gather in person outdoor at the church, okay, for Easter Sunday. If the weather is good, we will gather indoor, out, I'm sorry, outdoor in person at the church. Uh, however, if it is raining, we will have to uh, remain home. We do not have uh, enough uh, of a plan and a capacity in pl for the capacity uh, that we would have for Easter Sunday. We're just not there yet. The, our safety guidelines for the diocese wouldn't even come close to enabling us to welcome in everybody that we would want to welcome in. So what that means is that if it's raining, we will uh, not gather in person on Easter Sunday. That determination will be made on Saturday, on Holy Saturday, April the 3rd. So an email will go out, a Facebook post will go out. So please be looking for that. Um, and we will get that information out to everybody that day before so that nobody uh, shows up uh, and is uh, not able to participate. Of course, we will still have a live service for Easter, but what will happen at that point is those of us who are part of uh, the altar party and the choir will go inside the church and we will film live from there, okay? So one way or another, we will proclaim Christ has risen and we will celebrate that together. And hopefully, God willing, it will be in person and we will have a nice uh, sunny and a little bit warm day. All right, that is the picture. I wanted to share it with you. Uh, you heard it here first. <laughs> Let us take a moment to center ourselves, still ourselves, and listen to that small voice in our hearts, which is the living God.
Bless the Lord, who forgiveth all our sins. His mercy endureth forever. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which giveth life to the world, evermore give us this bread, that he may live in us and we in him, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Old Testament reading from the book of Numbers. From Mount Hor, the Israelites set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a certain pent of bronze and put it upon a pole, and whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. The word of the Lord. Psalm 107, verses 1 through 3 and 17 through 22. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Let all those whom the Lord has redeemed proclaim that he redeemed them from the hand of the foe. He gathered them out of the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some were fools and took rebellious ways. They were afflicted because of their sins. They abhorred all manner of food and drew near death's door. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He sent forth his word and healed them and saved them from the grave. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and the wonders he does for his children. Let them offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving and tell of his acts with shouts of joy. Epistle reading from the book of Ephesians. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power in the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who, who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses. And we were by nature children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised up with him and seated with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness 
toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is a gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Jesus Christ for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. The word of the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I know uh, many of you, like myself, um, are missing one of our Lenten traditions, which is uh, gathering on almost every Friday evening uh, for the Stations of the Cross. The Stations of the Cross, uh, for those who aren't familiar, are uh, on the walls at our church. And uh, each one gives us a picture of the moments uh, of what we call the Passion, uh, from Jesus's condemnation before Pilate, all the way uh, through the process of his his trial, his his mockery, his journey uh, with the cross on his back to Golgotha, and ultimately um, his execution there, his death and his burial. For some. Uh, the cross is, uh, as Paul has said, a stumbling block. That is, uh, it's hard to know what it is uh, that we're supposed to say or do or think uh, with the cross. And part of our devotion with the stations of the cross is to come before the cross and to come before it seeking, not having the answers to be transformed by what we see in our encounter with God. Today's readings give us a view, a teaching from Jesus himself about what is happening on the cross. <laughs> and this is <laughs> one of those bizarre cases of a mystery being explained by a mystery. Because that first passage that we have from the Old Testament book of Numbers tells us a story that is absolutely weird, mind-boggling, almost magical, wherein God is displeased with the Israelites when they are in the desert with Moses, they're coming to the Holy Land, and sends snakes amongst the people to, again, remind them of their need to be humble, their need to be uh, reverent for God. And so as the snakes are biting the people, they need a way of being healed. And so God reveals to Moses, this is what you do. You create the image of the snake and you hang it up on, on, a, on a stick and you hold it before the people. And as they look at that, this will heal them and protect them. 
Now, what the heck does that mean? I mean, if that doesn't sound like some kind of, you know, weird magic, I don't know what does. And I think that we have to lean into that. You know, again, this is part of being adult readers of scripture um, and to see all the different ways in which these threads come together. Uh, old folklore, yes, you know, sort of mythic cultic practices uh, into the stories that we have as Old Testament stories. And as is often said, the weirder and the more incongruous the story, the more likely that it's actually something that happened. <laughs> so here is Moses with his bronze serpent, holding it up in front of people in the middle of the desert as they're being bitten by these same snakes. And this is the way in which God chooses to heal them and protect them. So it's no small uh, challenge when Jesus likens his own crucifixion to come in this same way, being like the serpent in the desert, he says. Like the serpent in the desert lifted up on the staff, so the Son of Man must be put on the cross. And then comes words that, with which we, I hope, are all familiar. John three sixteen: For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever should believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. But how does that work? And here, Jesus reminds us that it has to do with the cross. It has to do with this transformation that happens before the cross. His death on the cross is transformative. Now, one way of talking about this is that he transforms the world in that moment. But it still leaves us with this question about what is our relationship to visualizing, to seeing, to meditating on, to praying towards Jesus who suffers on the cross. Well, Jesus himself, again, gives us the image when he likens us back to the serpent in the desert. Because in the same way that the serpent is lifted up and shown to the people, the source of the people's misery, the source of the people's suffering, the source of the people's uh, poisoning, yeah, is put before them so they can see it and behold it and be changed by the grace of God. So too, this is what happens with the crucifixion of Jesus. Not that Jesus is the serpent, that's where it gets confusing. Jesus is not the source of of our death and our condemnation. And that's made clear later in the passage when he says that God did not send Jesus, his son, into the world to condemn the world, right? But to give life eternal. So Jesus himself is not the poison. Jesus himself is not the source of death and fear and destruction. Jesus is not the source of condemning judgment of God upon the people. Rather, it is Jesus who receives the poison that is put upon him. Jesus who receives the denial. Jesus who receives the hatred, the brokenness. All of these sources of our suffering are heaped upon him. Not only in that time, but in our lives ongoing. It is still the case that those who are hungry for power, those who want to hold on to a status quo, those who want to have dominion over others, those who can't stand the idea of the weak being lifted up, will condemn and break down and destroy anything that gets in their way. That's what we see when we see Jesus crucified. We see it both in the actions of the empire, the actions of the temple authority, the actions of the people who condemn him. We see even in the weakness of the disciples who abandon him. And we're invited to look within ourselves to see how this poison is also within us. 
the condemning, the self-righteousness, the notion that if we just get rid of that one person who's threatening my view of the world, then everything's going to be good. You know? If we just get rid of these people who are messing everything up because they're poor, or they're sick, or they just can't get their act together, why don't they go get jobs, right? These people that Jesus is hanging out with, then everything's going to be all right. The rabble-rousers, the people who come in and say, flip the tables of the money changers in the temple. If we just get rid of those folks, people that are calling us to God's justice, then everything will be all right. We all have within us that judgment, that desire to cut out, the desire to condemn, to point the finger, to remove and excise something for the sake of having our perfect little vision of the world. Because that, more than anything else, is what kills Jesus Christ. And so when we look at the image of him upon the cross, for no reason of his, of no doing of his own, no good reason at all. Having scorn upon scorn, hatred, political animus, right, religious zealotry heaped at him. We see both the acts that were done two thousand years ago, and the machinations in so many of our heads and hearts. Here and here, still today. So, beloved, as we gaze upon Jesus on the cross, and I invite us to do this, as uncomfortable as it might be, we are seeing the tendency within each and every one of us, right, toward this poison towards this kind of hatred and criticality, towards this condemnation and refusal to listen, refusal to forgive. We see it. That's the serpent that has bitten us. That's the danger. And it's through seeing Jesus lifted up and knowing that danger, and seeing how that plays out in all human hearts, in human communities, all over the world at all times, that we begin to understand that there is another way. The way of the one who is taking that suffering upon himself willingly, such that we might learn, such that we might see another way, a way of hope, a way of radical self-giving love. That way is the way of Jesus. That way is the healing. And it's just as magical, just as mystical, just as mythical as holding up a bronze serpent in the desert. It changes us when we see it for what it is. God's love for us so that we don't have to keep dying. Let us embrace that cross as we come into these last days of Lent. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Prayers of the People Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people, receive these prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love give grace o heavenly father to all bishops and other ministers especially justin the archbishop of canterbury michael our presiding bishop douglas our bishop dave our rector and diane our deacon that they may both in their life and doctrine Set forth thy true and lively word, and rightfully and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also, so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of the government in this land and every land, especially Joseph, our president, the Congress and Supreme Court, Charlie, our governor, and Joseph, our mayor, that they may lead to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all the people to behold thy gracious hand in thy works, that, rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversary, especially those on our prayer list. And we bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of all thy saints. With them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant us our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways to the glory of thy name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, 
and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. Let us share this peace one with another. Peace. Yay, peace, peace, peace. <laughs> Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice unto Almighty God. spirit lift up your hearts we lift them up unto the lord let us give thanks unto our lord god it is neat and right so to do it is very meet right and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee o lord holy father almighty everlasting god through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was in every way tempted as we are, yet did not sin, by whose grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer unto ourselves, but unto him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all of the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Plenius Uncelia Terra Gloria Tua, Hosanna, Jealousies, Benedictus, 
All glory be to thee, O Lord our God, for that thou didst create heaven and earth, and didst make us in thine own image, and of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy people do celebrate and make with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for this coming again with power and great glory. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and with thy word and Holy Spirit, to bless and sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. And we early, earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies. Grant, we beseech thee, that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and also that we and all thy whole church may be one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. For it is by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy, thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. 
Therefore, let us keep the feast. Anus Dei, quid solis peccato mundi, miserere nobis. Anus Dei, quid tulis peccato mundi, miserere nobis. Anus Dei, gifts of God for the people of God. Blessed are those who trek the travail to come to this holy altar. Let us pray together the post-communion prayer as it appears in our bulletins. In union, O dear Lord, with the faithful at every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are being offered to the Father, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I present to you my soul and body with the earnest wish that I may ever be united to you, and since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, 
I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you and embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Oh, let nothing ever separate me from you. Let me live and die in your love. Amen. Amen. And now, may the blessing of God Almighty be upon you and upon all whom you know and love and care for. May we all walk these days of Lent together, leaning on one another, following after Christ who has set the way. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.